The film begins with a little girl named Yanwu, and her father is a sailor who rarely comes home. So, Yanwu couldn't remember her father's face clearly. Until Yanwu was a teenager, she had not seen her father's face, but her mother received news that her father had died in a ship accident, which devastated Yanwu's mother. And a few years later, her mother followed her father, she fell ill because she couldn't hold back her longing for Yanwu's father. Since that day, Yanwu has held grudges against her parents and is determined that she can live independently without a male figure in her life. Yanwu has now grown into a successful adult woman in her career, she is a lawyer and also a legal advisor at the HK Group Construction Company, where the company is one of the best companies out of 10 giant companies in South Korea. At that time, Yanwu was accompanying the son of the head of the HK Group, who was dragged into a rape case of a girl from a poor family. Heartlessly and arrogantly, Yanwu presented a realistic opinion without thinking about the victim's feelings, in other words she urged the victim and her mother not to drop the lawsuit for rape committed by the son of the head of the HK group. This really made the victim afraid that her identity would be exposed, therefore the victim withdrew the lawsuit and preferred to take the compensation money offered by Yanwu. Due to the mediation victory, Yanwu became even more haughty and felt that she could handle all the cases. Even when her senior advised her, Yanwu even put him down under the pretext that the senior was being overly dramatic. At night, Yanwu practices boxing with her friend, Jinju. Here, Jinju suggested to Yanwu that she go on a blind date, because Yanwu was already 38 years old. But Yanwu ignored it, and not long after, Yanwu was going to meet the leader of the HK group. The leader wanted to set up an apartment in a densely populated area and he ordered Yanwu to incite the residents to sell their land at a low price. In return, Yanwu was given a BMW car as well as a black card credit card. Yanwu then accepted and she was optimistic that she could persuade the residents to sell their land. As usual, Yanwu woke up in the morning in her luxurious apartment. She just lived alone, and afterwards Yanwu went to visit her mother's grave. There, arrogantly, Yanwu boasts of her achievements as a famous lawyer without any help from anyone. Until when Yanwu was driving home in a car given by the HK group, she suddenly had an accident. When she woke up, Yanwu was surprised because she was in a strange place, in the middle of nowhere where the sky looked so close. It turned out that Yanwu was in the afterlife and waiting for the queue to go to heaven. In other words, Yanwu was already dead. Yanwu couldn't accept her death, so she went straight to the receptionist. When Yanwu said her name, the receptionist was shocked and went straight to the director of heaven's immigration office. There, the director named Kim, was scolding his subordinates who mistakenly took the life of a woman named so Yun, who should have died in one month, but his man entered the wrong day that so so Yun was already in heaven. Along with that, came the receptionist who informed him of an error, because right now Yan Wu was in the queue to heaven. Director Kim informs that Yan Wu should have died in 2054, and in fact it happened due to a mistake by the director's staff, because Yan Wu's name is the same as that of an old man. Therefore, Director Kim called Yan Wu and apologized for the mistake. Mr. Kim also offers Yanwu if she wants to live again, then she must live as someone else, that is So Hyun, for one month. Reluctantly, Yanwu agreed. Yanwu wakes up in a shabby state, as a woman named So Hyun. Yanwu was shocked because she looked so shabby. In the midst of her panic, suddenly came a man who looked relaxed. The man thought that Yanwu was acting, so he didn't respond to her. Until when Yanwu saw a photo, she realized that she was now So Hyun, the wife of a handsome man named Sun Won. Not only that, Yanwu was also very surprised when she found out that she already had two children, the first was a teenage girl named Hanol, while the second was named Haru. Yanwu ran out of the apartment to calm herself down. Not long after, Haru arrives with Yanwu's wallet and cell phone. Here, Yanwu looks at her ID card and is shocked to find out that now, her name is So Yun and is 34 years old, which means Yanwu is 4 years younger than her previous age. Haru then grabs Yanwu to take him to the bus stop so he doesn't miss his school bus. There, the mothers were already busy and immediately greeted Yanwu. Of course, this made Yanwu uncomfortable, because she never hung out with ordinary housewives. After the kids left for school, Yanwu was forced by the mothers to take up odd jobs, while hanging out at the stall. When she was hanging out, Yanwu also found out from them that she married at a very young age, when she was 18. This made Yanwu sick to her stomach, so they thought that Yanwu was pregnant with her third child. Inside the toilet, Yanwu was visited by Director Kim, he warns Yanwu that if she acts like a stranger in front of her family and neighbors, she will be sent back to the afterlife. Like it or not, Yanwu had to obey Mr. Kim's orders. Having no other choice, Yanwu must be able to make her family happy as well as herself. Therefore, Yanwu immediately went shopping for kitchen necessities which were quite expensive. But when she wanted to pay, the credit card limit was insufficient. 
Luckily, she had money in her wallet, so Yun Wu was able to pay it. At that moment, Yun Wu got a call that Haru had come home from school and was waiting for her in front of the apartment. While having dinner with her family, Yun Wu announced that she wanted to go on vacation to her parents' house. Of course it got a protest from Han Ol because she didn't want to take care of her brother alone. Here, Yun Wu didn't care and still wanted to go on vacation, but when Sun Wan told her that Yun Wu's parents had died and had no home, Yun Wu felt silent. Sun Wan also wondered why Yun Wu's behavior had been so strange lately. Once upon a time, Sun Wan asked Yun Wu to have an intercourse. But Yun Wu was furious at Sun Wan and said that he was a pervert who married an 18-year-old girl. Hearing his wife's words, Sun Wan felt hurt and could only surrender when Yun Wu chose to sleep in the living room. At work, Sun Wan tells his best friend, Yun Su, about his wife's attitude. Yun Su then suggested to Sun Wan to threaten his wife with divorce papers, if his wife still loves him, she will definitely not receive the letter. But, if his wife takes the divorce papers it means that his wife no longer loves him. After complaining with Yun So, Sun Wan met his boss, Mr. Harun, to submit his design proposal regarding the procurement of a train noise silencer that he made. However, Mr. Harun refused and preferred the sidewalk construction project, because the project was far more profitable for him than the procurement of train noise dampers. Meanwhile, Yun Wu, who was hanging out with the ladies, was asked to sign a petition against the HK Group's apartment development, which reminded her of the night she died, where the HK Group's leader gave her documents to persuade residents to want to sell their land at a cheap price. Therefore, Yun Wu immediately went to her luxurious apartment to retrieve the document. There, Yun Wu was surprised to see that nothing had changed in her old apartment. The only thing that has changed is that her position has been replaced by So Hyun, who is now in a coma in the hospital. After picking up the document, Yun Wu remembered the credit card that the leader of the HK group had given her. Presumptuously, Yun Wu took it. After that, Yun Wu went to the mall to buy luxury things using the black card she took. Without thinking, Yun Wu bought fancy clothes and bags, not knowing what the risks were. At that time, the shop cashier felt a little suspicious because Yun Wu's signature was different from the one on the black card. Because the name on the card was Yun Wu, while the signature she wrote was named So Hyun. On the other hand, Haru, who feels his mother is a little strange, takes the initiative to buy Yun Wu menopause medicine using his savings. This medicine is useful for dealing with aging that occurs in adult women, such as anger and also never menstruating. Haru then approached Yun Wu and told her to take the medicine, but Haru reasoned that the medicine was a vitamin that she often took. As it continued to be forced, Yun Wu ended up taking it. Not long after, Sun Wan came and was angry at Yun Wu, Sun Wan expressed his annoyance at Yun Wu, and said that in fact it was Yun Wu who chased him and forced Sun Wan to marry her. Sun Wan also tests Yun Wu's loyalty by following Yun Su's advice, giving divorce papers to Yun Wu. Unexpectedly, Yun Wu actually received the letter, so Sun Wan became even more dizzy. Especially when Sun Wan found the luxury clothes and bags bought by Yun Wu, but Yun Wu explained that she bought these items using her own money. In the middle of the debate, suddenly the police came to their house. At the police station, Yun Wu is accused of stealing the black card from So Hyun, who is now in a coma in the hospital. Even though he had just quarreled with Yun Wu, Sun Wan defended his wife so fiercely that the police were afraid. From here too, Yun Wu found out that in the past, Sun Wan had gone to law school and had been her junior. Yun Wu feels guilty, because the reason Sun Wan dropped out of college is because he married Yun Wu. After that, Yun Wu was reprimanded by Mr. Kim, for 44 hours she lived as So Hyun, Yun Wu had changed So Hyun's good image to be bad. Mr. Kim requested that Yun Wu behave well to her husband even if only once. The next day, Yun Wu overheard the conversation of the women who were confused about when the HK group would buy their land. They are confused about where to live. Therefore, Yun Wu immediately contacted the management of the HK group and admitted that she was the manager of So Hyun who was in a coma at the hospital. Yun Wu said that residents are willing to sell their land and apartments, as long as the HK group gives a fair compensation price. In order to make the price offer match, Yun Wu also made a proposal to the HK group from documents taken at her apartment yesterday. But unfortunately, suddenly Sun Wan came home, so Yun Wu immediately hid the proposal. Sun Wan then invited Yun Wu to go to an office party. Initially, Yun Wu refused and disappointed Sun Wan. But Yun Wu remembered the words of Director Kim who told her to please Sun Wan. Finally, Yun Wu accepted her husband's invitation. At the party, Sun Wan was stunned when he saw Yun Wu's beauty. Sun Wan also introduces Yun Wu to the head of the South Korean Environmental Service. At this moment, Sun Wan wants to explain to the head of the Environmental Service about the train noise reduction project. However, Mr. Harun immediately changed the subject. 
Seeing her husband being looked down upon, Yun Wu felt hurt. When they had dinner together, Yun Wu, who was annoyed with Mr. Harun, tried to corner him, who rejected Sun Wan's project. She satirized Mr. Harun in front of the people and said if the train noise suppression project was not profitable for Mr. Harun so he ignored Sun Wan's wishes, even though the local residents were indeed disturbed by the sound of trains coming from the underground. Seeing this, Sun Wan was angry and immediately pulled Yun Wu out of the dining table. He scolded Yun Wu for her act of disrespecting Mr. Harun as his superior. In the midst of their debate, Mr. Harun came so that Sun Wan apologized for his wife's actions earlier. When Sun Wan and Yun Wu were about to leave, Mr. Harun insulted Yun Wu by calling her a whore. This makes Sun Wan emotional and he beats Mr. Harun. Because he was still hungry, Sun Wan asked Yun Wu to eat at a fast food restaurant. There, Yun Wu felt guilty about the incident just now. She was afraid if Sun Wan lost his job because of her. Here, Sun Wan emphasized that he would always protect the pride of his family and he would also love his family no matter what, even if he had to lose his own life. Seeing Sun Wan who was so responsible, Yun Wu started to like him. Even when Haru sleeps, she looks so fond of him because Haru always cares for her and gives her vitamins. Then, Yun Wu tried to cook her husband's favorite rice. At the same time, Han Ol asked for money, but Yun Wu didn't give it and asked Han Ol to fold the paper bag first. The more she folds paper bags, the more money Han Ol gets. From here, Yun Wu taught Han Ol to live independently, that when we want something, we must try hard first. Once upon a time, there was a night market being held in front of their apartment. There, Haru, who had just eaten a snack, suddenly stumbles and falls. Luckily, there was a kind-hearted trader who helped him, but not long after, came Mrs. Campling, the landlady who asked the seller for rent for the stalls in a rude manner, so that the residents of the apartment watched. Seeing the crowd going on, Yun Wu came over. At first, Yun Wu didn't care when the seller was looked down upon by Mrs. Campling. However, when she found out that the seller was helping Haru, she provided evidence that all this time Mrs. Campling had been misusing the apartment's money by taking advantage of network poles and billboards, where the rent money should have gone to all apartment owners, but instead Mrs. Campling herself enjoyed it. This made Mrs. Campling afraid, especially when Yun Wu mentioned the law that could imprison her. Of course, Mrs. Campling immediately apologized to the seller and left the crowd. All the citizens cheered in awe of Yun Wu's courage and intelligence. The next day, Yun Wu gave Han Ol money because she had folded quite a lot of paper bags. Yun Wu is a little suspicious and asks if Han Ol is going on a date, because her makeup today is so pretty. In fact, Han Ol goes to the house of her senior, Ju Yun. And it turns out, Ju Yun wants to make love with Han Ol and will record it. Of course Han Ol refused and tried to leave. But in fact, this is what happened. Yun Wu was looking at the calendar, where she realized that her life as Su Hyun had only two weeks left. Suddenly, Han Ol comes and goes straight to her room. Yun Wu felt that something was wrong with her daughter, so Yun Wu came to Han Ol. Yun Wu was shocked when she saw the wounds on Han Ol's face and thighs, which indicated that Han Ol had been raped. After Han Ol calms down, Yun Wu asks what Han Ol has been through. She told her mother that she had been abused and harassed by her senior, Ju Yun. But she is afraid to report it, because Ju Yun is a rich man's son. Yun Wu then says that she will get Ju Yun punished because her daughter's pride is more important than anything else. The next day, Yun Wu and Han Ol go to see Ju Yun who turns out to be accompanied by his lawyer. Ju Yun's lawyer says that Ju Yun's family will pay compensation money, as long as Han Ol doesn't take this case to court, and the lawyer's words are exactly like what Yun Wu said at the beginning of the film. Yun Wu then asked permission to go to the toilet, and from here she finally felt how the victim's family felt who had been abused by the children of rich people. So she regretted her actions when she defended the son of the leader of the HK group. Not long after, Han Ol arrives and she has given up. She suggested that they follow the lawyer's wishes. But unexpectedly, Yun Wu was determined to fight Ju Yun. She says even though Han Ol's identity is threatened with being exposed in public, she will still fight Ju Yun. Even Yun Wu said she would try to make it viral on social media that Ju Yun was a rapist. Not only that, Yun Wu also gave a lesson to Ju Yun by hitting him. Seeing Yun Wu struggling to defend her, Han Ol felt very fond of Yun Wu. And Yun Wu also felt the same way. Now, Yun Wu's motherly soul has begun to emerge. She feels more and more affection for Sun Wan as well as Haru. But in the midst of Yun Wu's happiness, Mr. Kim suddenly came to her. Here, Mr. Kim says that in one week, Yun Wu will die due to an accident and everything has been planned according to the destiny of So Hyun's death. Yun Wu also asks to live as So Hyun, but Mr. Kim refuses, because this is So Hyun's destiny. Mr. 
Kim said that if Yeonwoo loves her family, then she must give the best affection for one week before she dies. Sung Hwan, who is still working, is approached by Mr. Haroon and given a transfer proposal that next month he must move to work abroad. Sung Hwan apologized for his behavior at that time, but instead of forgiving Sung Hwan, Mr. Haroon insulted his wife again so that Sung Hwan warned him not to insult his family again if Mr. Haroon still wants to live. Then Sung Hwan invited Yeonwoo to eat at a restaurant and told her that he would be transferred to work abroad. Hearing that, Yeonwoo apologized and regretted what she had done the other day, especially since she was going to die soon. Yeonwoo thought about the fate of her children, so without thinking, Yeonwoo went straight to Mr. Haroon. The next day, she apologizes and asks that Sung Hwan not be transferred overseas. However, Mr. Haroon acted arrogantly so that it made Yeonwoo, who initially felt guilty, become emotional. Yeonwoo immediately scared Mr. Haroon by threatening to report him to the leader of the HK group. The scene switches to Haru who suddenly faints when he wants to buy medicine for Yeonwoo. Hearing the news, Yeonwoo and Sung Hwan immediately came to the hospital. The doctor then says that Haru has a rare disease in the cornea of his eye, where it will cause permanent blindness. The doctor also said that this rare disease is hereditary, from there Yeonwoo just remembered that when she was little, she suffered from this disease so her mother worked hard to treat her disease. That's what caused Yeonwoo's mother to die. Yeonwoo feels unacceptable and protests to director Kim, she says why does the innocent Haru have to suffer this? Here, Mr. Kim said it was destiny if Yeonwoo became a parent. Not long after, came Sung-won who tried to calm her down. At night, Yeonwoo lies beside Haru who is still sleeping soundly. She expresses hatred towards her parents, but gradually, when she gets to know Haru, Hanol, and also Sung-won, Yeonwoo realizes that her parents were behind her success. Yeonwoo also realized she had to share her fortune so she could be happy. At that sad moment, Mr. Kim came and told Yeonwoo that her time as Sohyun was over. Yeonwoo expresses her wish that she wants to see Haru get well and live a normal life. In fact, she was willing to sacrifice her previous life in order to be a good wife and mother for the Sunhwan family. But Mr. Kim refused because this was already their agreement. So, Yeonwoo runs away just to be able to say goodbye to Sunhwan, Hanol, and also Haru. Until when Yeonwoo ran to the hospital, this is what happened. Luckily, Mr. Kim gave her time to say goodbye first to Sun Wan, Haru and also Hanol. Without lingering, Yeonwoo went straight to Hanol and hugged her tightly while saying goodbye. While to Sun Wan, Yeonwoo apologized for leaving a lot of trouble. But Sun Wan responded casually, because he thought that Yeonwoo was just going to buy food. When in reality, it was their last meeting. At the hospital, Yeonwoo wakes up in her real body. Without thinking twice, Yeonwoo went straight to the hospital where Haru was being treated. But when she arrives, Haru isn't there. Even when Yeonwoo visits Sung Wan's apartment, their family doesn't live there anymore. Since the events of one extraordinary month in her life, Yeonwoo is determined to become an honest and good lawyer. She also submitted evidence of embezzlement of HK Group funds to her seniors. Yeonwoo also intended to move out of her luxurious apartment because she felt very lonely. While packing up her things, Yeonwoo found a photo in an album. Yeonwoo was suddenly shocked when she saw her father's face, which turned out to be director Kim. She regretted having hated her father, even though her father loved her very much by giving her valuable lessons. At the end of the film, Yeonwoo was already on a plane bound for New Zealand. She intends to find a new life so that her life is happier. Unexpectedly, she meets Haru, Hanol, and also Sun Hwan. But unfortunately, they did not recognize Yeonwoo. Sung Wan revealed that since the death of his wife, he has decided to live temporarily in New Zealand, at his sister's house. Here, Yeonwoo looked happy because she had the opportunity to be close to her little family again. <laughs>